Chip Carey covers their games and does a great job, and he spends a few minutes with us here today on high heat. Things I welcome, Chip. The one thing I would say, you know, last year that div this division wasn't very good. This year the Mets are very good. The, Mets, yes. the Braves are not going to be able to be 57 and 58 in August and win the division. They're going to have to be careful. Can't let the Mets run away or hide. Let me get your thoughts on that first. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree with you, Chris. I think the, the division is much improved. I know you're going to have Paul Severino on with the Marlins. I mean, they're playing great with their pitching staff and the offensive improvements they have made. Uh, we know what the Mets have done. We know what the Braves have done historically in this divisional race. Uh, but, yeah, I think that right now this is a team that hasn't hit its stride quite yet. Uh, the Braves, from an offensive standpoint, are kind of uh, muddling along, I think it's safe to say. They've got Acuna back. Ronald's going to certainly help things. But a 28% strikeout rate, low on base percentage, and a real right-handed uh, dominant offensive lineup at times has been problematic for this team. But we're all confident in the guys in that room. That's a really, really good team that Brian Snicker's running out there every day. They haven't hit their stride. And sometimes, as you know, it takes facing a really, really good team to bring out the best in you. We hope that's the case when the Braves start their series with the Mets tonight. Four games in three days. They come back in August to play five games. Don't forget, only two trips in for Atlanta this year right. in the city field because of the lockout. Do the Braves understand that you can't spot the Mets too big a lead in the NL East? So this early May series has a little bit more importance for them than normal. Do they understand that coming in here tonight? Well, they know the importance of it. They can see the standings page in the newspapers, Chris. They know that they're playing the best team, the team that's playing the best right now. They've got their starters lined up. Uh, you're going to have Max Freed tonight, Charlie Morton, and Kyle Wright in some order tomorrow, and then Ian Anderson on Wednesday afternoon. The Braves miss Max Scherzer, but, you know, looking at what the Mets are throwing at the Braves, Atlanta hasn't solved Tyler McGill. We haven't seen Chris Bassett before, I don't believe. So uh, this is going to be a great matchup of two really, really good teams. But you're right. I think as we start this first week of May, the one thing that's frustrating for the Braves is they haven't taken advantage of what looked to be on paper a pretty soft schedule. They split four with the Reds who are having a tough time. They lost a series to the Nationals. Uh, the Marlins took two out of three from them at home. They had a decent road trip out in San Diego and L.A. and then just dropped two out of three to the Texas Rangers who are off to a really, really rough start as well. So, look, the time to kick it into gear is, is beginning, I think, a little earlier than we would like for the Braves. But as I said before, uh, this is a really, really good team that's been through this before. Another day, uh, another dilemma, as uh, Brian Snicker might put it. But he's confident in those guys, and I think all of our fan base is very confident in them too. We'll see what happens starting tonight. All right, what's the matter with the offense, Chip? You're right, the pitching, right, has been great. You know, they got enough guys in yep. that bullpen. Uh, what has been the problem? It's not like they've been in bad weather. I mean, they played in San Diego, Texas, and L.A., so you can't say, well, it's been five degrees out and they're not in their stride yet. How come they haven't hit a lot? Let me get your feel there. Go ahead. Strikeouts, I think that's a big part of it, Chris. Uh, they haven't hit well with runners in scoring position. This is a team that's built to hit home runs. They've certainly done that. But because there are so few guys on base on a consistent basis, most of the Braves homers, I think all but three or four, have been solo home runs. Uh, so they're getting offense, but they're not getting the two, three run homer that this team feasted on and rode to the World Series last year. So high strikeout rate, 28 percent. Real right-hand dominant lineup. Losing Eddie Rosario, uh, who was such a big force for the Braves in the postseason last year, I think is a big, big blow. He was a left-handed bat with some sock. He's out for 8 to 12 weeks with eye surgery. Nobody saw that coming. And so uh, not having that lefty-righty balance in the lineup has been problematic. And two, this is a team that the bottom of the lineup has to feed the top. And when that's happened, at times, the one, two, three guys haven't been in sync. So nothing's really started to flow on a consistent basis. We think it's going to start doing that, getting Ronald Acuna Jr. back in the lineup on a consistent basis, I think will go a long way toward helping that. But coming off knee surgery just nine months ago, they're going to be very careful with him. But quite obviously, having a guy with his talent and uh, his explosiveness leading things off certainly makes you feel a lot better about what your offense can do once it gets going. Uh, how was it in L.A. seeing Freeman, Chip? You were there, I'm assuming. Give me a little feel on Freddie reuniting with him. I know it's going to be a bigger deal when the Dodgers go to Atlanta, but how right. was it when the Braves visited Dodger Stadium a couple of weeks back? You were there. Fill me in. Emotional. Uh, I, Dansby Swanson said it really well a couple of weeks ago. It's okay to feel about this in two different ways. We all miss Freddie Freeman, the person, as an ambassador for the Paul Club, as a guy who was helpful to the media, fans, a husband, family guy, great father. You miss those kinds of players. Those are the players you want to have in your organization and keep forever. We understand the business side of it. The Braves and Freddie Freeman could not have a point of intersection from a business standpoint that made sense for both parties. And that's how Freddie Freeman became a Dodger. 
Uh, we will always love and appreciate what Freddie did for the Braves franchise, for us as friends, for us as broadcasters. He's one of the best players ever to wear a Braves uniform. But ultimately, Alex Anthopoulos had to make a difficult decision and do what was right for the franchise. Freddie had to make a difficult decision and do what was right for him. And look, both teams ended up in really, really good places. Freeman's in L.A. playing back home for a terrific ball club. And Matt Olson, a hometown kid who played at the same high school that Jeff Francoeur did. Uh, heck, Jeff's mom taught him math in high school in seventh grade. Uh, he's back home and playing wow. in Atlanta, and uh, I think he's going to be a guy that uh, our fans will continue to fall in love with over a long period of time. He's part of this new uh, breed of Braves players that they're bringing in, and we're hoping that like Freddie Freeman, Matt Olson, and Ozzie Albies and Ronald Acuna Jr. will raise another banner here this year and in many years to come. Hopefully you're not at the ballpark for 12 hours tomorrow. A regular doubleheader. You get the 10th inning and get you a little break. But uh, we'll see. 3.15 tomorrow. The two games. And don't freeze tonight. It's always a pleasure, yes. Chipper. Keep in, keep in touch. All right. Thanks very much. Four games in 48 hours. Can't wait. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs>